In today's show, we have part two of our Power Apps Responsive series. And what we're gonna look at today is we're gonna look at size breakpoints, so different sections of a screen and how that affects your sizing. And we're also gonna do some conditional logic around, you know, if this, then that, based off of the screen sizing. And we're gonna do all this while building a header component. Because what I thought was components, you know, building responsive components is one of those things you can do now, kind of get yourself ahead of the game. And so as you do that, we're gonna kind of use that to explore how all that would work. Should be fun. But first, here's our intro. Hi, my name is Shane Young with Power Apps 911. Those guys. And today, it's all about part two of Power Apps Responsiveness. And what we're going to do today is we're going to explore size breakpoints. So these are these different boundaries. It's 600, 900, or 1200 pixels by default, but you can change them. But these are the breakpoints you use to determine how you want your app to behave when it's at different set screen sizes. So we're going to talk about those. Then we're gonna go and manipulate some of those behaviors. So we're gonna do things with our header, like we're gonna hide different pieces when we're in different sizes, and change the font, just to kind of get your heads wrapped around this idea that your apps are gonna be very dynamic and conditional based on things like the sizes of the app. So, should be fun. Shouldn't be too complicated either. So, let's just switch over to my desktop and take a look at what we're gonna build. All right, let's take a look at how this thing looks. So I've kind of built a demo version what we're gonna work our way towards, so hit play. Remember now we have the ability to visualize this and you can see I've got my nice little header. Right? We've talked about building a header a lot like this with a component in a previous video. So I'll put a link up here to that. And then about putting that same one into a component library. So I'll put a link up to that as well because today we're not worried about components and how they work as much as we're worried about responsiveness and how they affect a component. So if you haven't watched those, they might help you understand this video a little better. But now that we've done this, I'm gonna grab the side over here and as I start to pull this to the right, you can see my screen width is changing. So I just put a label on there to make it so we could see this. But you notice right here, extra large four greater than 1200 pixels wide. I wrote all of this as well. I'll show you how that's done in just a second. But to make it easier for us to visualize, because if I drag this thing down here to 1100 pixels, look at that. Now the screen breakpoints. So screen breakpoints are these predetermined container sizes. And so my uh, one called large is equates to three and it is between 901 and 1200 pixels wide. So right now we're at 1125, that's why we're there. If we go all the way down to 90, so if we get to 901, right, we're still in large, but as soon as we hit 900, because that's one of our breakpoints, then we drop into the medium. Now the breakpoints don't have any actual significance from functionality wise, but they are a built-in way to kind of plan for screens being different sizes, right? If you think about it, you know, if we have medium, so this might be a, a minima or a browser that's kind of not maximizing the screen. Whereas if we get down in here, or min, medium, medium is also very much equates to having your phone turned horizontally, right? That's where I think about medium. Whereas if we get into small, which is less than 600, um, so then small, that's when your phone is in a horizontal view. And as we get bigger, you know, these are things like, my computer, so extra wide here, you know, I've got a big, big giant monitor, but these are the different ones, you know. If you think about your standard tablet app today, 1366 is the default width, just to kind of give you some perspective. So breakpoints are an interesting constraint because they work and they, you know, they're built into the app. And I can tell you that Microsoft has bigger plans, they're going to use them more. So while when I originally started down this road of layouts, I was very tempted to always just be like, hey, just do everything based off of screen width, you know, dot, whatever, I found that, you know, using breakpoints is gonna set me up for future work better. So if you're wondering this label, I just did here a screen width and parent width. So that's how I was able to put this on the screen. Really helped me as I was trying to understand, you know, moving it between different devices, see what's happening. So this is handy little troubleshooting thing as you're learning. And so then this is an interesting one as well I wrote. And so I just used the switch function to switch on the parent size. And so I said, hey, if the parent size is screen size dot extra large, then just write all this garbage on the screen, right? And if it was large, medium, or small. And so that was just something I did to make it easier for you guys to see this. I'm gonna fix my typo right there because it was bothering me. All right, the important things I do during videos. But you can see that I just wrote this. Once again, this was just to help me understand what was happening as I was trying to troubleshoot and explore because you know I didn't have a great video like this to help me. Yeah, whatever. Um, now what you will also see, like if we do screen size dot extra large, it actually just equates to a four. 
And so where do these things called breakpoints come into play? Well, if you click on app over here on the left, you're gonna see that one in this drop down, right? Normally we go to on start, we do a lot there, but we have this thing called size breakpoints. And so these are the default values, 600, 912. And so small is just anything less than, or uh, up to 600. And then medium is anything from 601 to 900. Large is from 901 to 1200. Now what's important to understand is that you can change these, right? You have complete control. So if you're like, hey, I don't want those breakpoints. My devices, I actually want it to behave this way at blah, 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 blah. You can totally just add your own breakpoints here. So earlier I was messing around like and I changed this to a thousand and it takes it, it goes right away. So if we hit play now and you'll see that if we pull this down to, oh, I missed. So as I resize this thing, Right now we're large, right, which is 900 to 1200, but as soon as we hit uh, 900s now, we went into medium. Remember, because these words on the screen, these were just things I typed in. What you really are looking for is that it's in the medium breakpoint. So 997 is in the medium breakpoint now because I changed the breakpoint to go switch to large, or for medium, I changed the upper bound of medium from 900 to 1000. You can also add your own. So if you wanted to have 600, 900, 1200, 1500, and, oh wait, no, I can't do that. I need smaller numbers, Shane, not bigger numbers. So we'll do 600, 700, 800, 900, and 1000, right? So we just made a bunch of breakpoints. So what you need to understand about this is that it's not gonna break anything. Well, my little guy's confused now, right? He's like, well, 997, I don't know what that is. So what you'd want to do in this case, oh, let's probably make this thing bigger. Let's make this bigger again. Is we would go here, I'll just throw another label on the screen. And right here, we're just going to say, um, so active screen, oh my goodness. App dot active screen dot um, size. And so here you can see that it's showing you a number. I realize it's kind of hard to see when it plays, so it's easier to see. But so, because we're in the sixth breakpoint, remember, because we just changed these. And so anything bigger than 1,000 is 600, or is, is six. And so if we change this, if we go down, so now if I grab this, we get under 1,000, it should go to five. There we, oh. It did not go to five. Okay, when I used active screen. That's that's my fault, hang on. Yeah, this is one of the things I've ran into, is so by doing um, app.activescreen.size, this does not seem to be dynamic. I think that's a bug. So instead, uh, using parent.width, that one will, or sorry, um, parent.size, so parent.size should work a little bit better. So there you go, nine, four, three. So now we're back into all this working. Um, so just keep that in mind. Is <laughs> I learned that lesson the hard way. I'm glad that actually happened on the demo here. But so parent.size works. Also what you could do is I can do screen one.size. So these are different ways of getting at it. But the reason I point this out is because um, I, a lot of times my things I have to use app.activescreen. whatever, but for whatever reason the, the dynamicness of responsiveness doesn't seem to like that one. So don't use that one. Use either your screen name or if you're in a place where the screen is your parent, parent.size is the, the most dynamic. Okay. So hopefully that makes a little sense, right? Those are uh, size breakpoints. They're, they're not like, they feel like, why did I just waste a bunch of time learning that? But I, Microsoft's kind of nudged me in the direction of, hey, we're going to use those for more things in the future. So I immediately, when I heard that, I just stopped using um, actual pixel counts and just started using screen breakpoints. Can I get the same effect? Just a little bit um, different. So here, we'll go back. Let's fix these real quick. Put these back to their default values. There you go. Okay, so now my breakpoints are back to normal. Perfect, what we wanted. Um, so with that set right now I think we're ready to build our component so to build our component we're going to switch over here to this other uh, app right this is the one we built in part one or where we were working in part one and so the first thing I want you to do is go here to components and then new component 
And so I'm just going to call this responsive header. Responsive header. I'm probably going to misspell it because as you can see, I just did. Um, now keep in mind that I'm not here. I'm not, we're not teaching head or responsive. We're not teaching components right now. So I'm going to go kind of fast through some of the componenty pieces. I really want to worry about the, uh, whatever, but there is another video for that, which I mentioned earlier. Okay. So the first thing I want to do with responsive header is I'm going to set its size to 1366 by a hundred. So that feels about right to me is kind of like that idea of, you know, yeah, I get what I want. And so the first thing we want to put in our uh, header is we're going to actually put one of these layouts. Um, we're going to put a horizontal container. Now I'm going to stretch it to fill the whole thing because my OD, OCD requires that. But in reality, what I'm going to do is click on container here and then I need to set the height. And I'm going to say, hey, I want your height to be your parent's height. And I want your width to be your parent's width. So then that gets it making it responsive, right? That way my container is just going to resize because when someone uses my header, they're going to have it in different containers as well. Okay. So then there is all set. So then now I'm going to probably take it. I'm going to say, you know what? I want your color to be, um, I don't know, orange, orange. Why not? A little bit different. No, that's, we'll go with green. Yeah, it's a little less offensive. All right. So we got a color. And so then now that we've got a color to it, um, we're going to add some pieces. So I'm going to say insert and an icon. And the first thing that you noticed in our other one um, was that we had a back. And so then now I'm going to say, well, I want your um, height to be 100 and your width to be 100. Oh, I misspelled that. Type better, Shane. 100. So there we go. That has filled out. Um, and then I might say, you know what? I don't really like, it feels a little too close to the edges. So I'm gonna go to my container and say, Hey container, I want you to have some padding. So in this way, my container will kind of force it. And so then now that I've made it 10 by 10 by 10, I can't make this thing a hundred. I need to make it 80. So 80 and where's your height that your height is right here. 80. Ooh, there we go. So there is our first piece. So then now I want to add another piece. So we're going to do media and an image, same type of deal. I'm going to drag it now. Oh, wait a minute. Look what I did. I did not get it inside my container. Very common boo-boo for me. So I'm going to click on my container again. Now I'm going to say media and image. There we go. Now my media image is in there. And so then size or height wise for this one, I'm going to do the same type of thing. I want you to be 80. And so then now we're going to add a file and we'll just add our friend Chewy. And I like my little Chewy 1024. Nope, we'll add my Power Apps 911 1024. There we go. And so then now that is not big enough. So I'm going to, you know, I want to make this bigger, but you can't drag it like I'm used to. So then now we're going to try like a width of like 250. Eh, that looks a little better. 300. Sure. So now we've got our logo. Now you notice these two are crammed up on top of each other. Remember in your container, you can set a gap. So that's how far I want my objects, my, my different pieces inside my container to be apart. So that'll be a 10. Okay. Now I'm going to throw a label in here. And for my label, I'm going to do the same type of thing. I want you to be a 80. And then I want your width going to do flexible width. I want you to take up as much space as you can. All right. That looks good. We're going to throw another label in here. And so for this label, this is where I did something like the user, right? So I said, Oh, I did not mean to do that. I said user dot full name. And so then this should show us the person's name. All right. And then one more uh, media image here. I'm going to set it to be 80 by 80 as well. Oh, that is not how you type 80. There you go. So that is in there. And then we're going to set this one to be user dot image. And then I like the little roundness. I'm going to set the border radius to be 40. There we go. So something like that, right? That gives us a header, at least in the right direction of what we wanted. Um, now I probably would take this one, be like, hey, I want to change you. We're going to change your font right now to be like a 30. And we'll set you to be semi-bold. Okay. 
So that gives us a bit of a header. Now, what's really nice about this is because we set this middle label to be um, flexible with one. So it's going to say, hey, this guy gets his 80. This guy gets his 300. This guy gets his 150. And then this guy gets his 80, right? And then whatever space is left, I want you to fill out. So that seems pretty cool. So if we go over here now, we'll make ourselves a new screen. And we're going to add the component to that screen. Oh, no, it's not how you add the component. You go up here to custom, responsive header. Now, I immediately try to test this every time, and I'm not going to make that mistake now. What I need you to do is then go up here and say, hey, width, your width needs to be parent.width, right? Because you want it to respond to the screen, which is already set up to respond to sizing. So now if we hit play, all right, that looks like we expect. And if we start to drag this over, you can see that it is all right. This one here is giving up its space. These one, two, three, four objects, they all have fixed widths. Their widths are not changing, but the middle section will just keep giving up its space as we get smaller and smaller. Now you also notice right away that like I got too small and then, um, you know, my face went away. But over here, if we go back to this one, let's pull this back out wide again. So this is what we're trying to emulate. If we pull this one in, right? Same thing, same thing, same thing. But then, look at that. When I get to my screen breakpoint here, ooh, we got rid of the extra company logo and we got rid of the person's name. We kept their face. People like to see their faces. And so then now it keeps pulling in. Also notice, right, look at this font size. Watch screen one. See the font? And if we pull it out here, make it bigger, the font gets bigger as well. So we're going to have to do that as well. But so we want to do all this. I really like it, but we got to figure out kind of how that's going to work. Let's just go back over here. So what do we want to do? Well, what we're going to do here is go back over to components. What we can do is we can say, hey, you, I want to have your visible property, right? So we're going to go to visible. So what we want is something like this, right? We're thinking, hey, I want like responsive header dot, but there is no size. There is no screen size. So I got really like perplexed with this. Like, what do I do here, right? Because I don't have a way to use those breakpoints. We know those are important. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on responsive head over here. We're going to add a custom property, and we're going to I'm going to call it something real obvious, like screen size input. Okay, and we're going to set its data type to a number, and say create. So then now what we're going to do? Oh, we're going to click back on our image. We're going to say, hey, your visible property. We're going to be like, hey, if you're, um, so what is that? Responsive header. Oh, you got to spell it right. Responsive header dot screen size input. So the thing we just created is greater than two. Okay. Remember, we know that because we want this only to show up if it is large or extra large. And we know that large is three and extra large is 40, right? We, we kind of know that's how the default settings are. Now you notice though, it's like right now it's a hundred. Well, that's a little weird. Oh, but I probably gotta fix this. Let's just go back over here. What did I just do? I don't even know. So screen size input greater than two. So it's showing up because right now the screen size input is, well, if it would show us, it's a hundred because that's the default value for that. If we go back to the screens, if we click on our header, now it has an input property called screen size input. And so what I'm going to do is just say, hey, I just want you to do parent dot size. Remember that, so right now that equates to four. And what we might do just to make our lives easier, we'll go back over to this app for a second and we'll steal um, this. So that way we have our little label that shows us the text. We'll place that on the screen make our testing go easier, right? It's why we like to write things like this so we can test. So now we'll say play. And if we start to drag, right, three, we still have the logo. And then now two, oh, look at that. With two, our, uh, our data disappeared. Now our other text disappeared, which was not supposed to happen. You know what that tells me I did? It tells me that I accidentally set the visible property to this. I want it's visible to always be true. Hopefully you guys saw that I screwed that up, but there you go. So then now if we go back over here, let's try this one more time. Play, we'll pull this in. So we're at three, we see the logo, 
to the logo goes away, but notice that the space that it takes is not gone. That's the important lesson here, is that when you hide a piece of a person, a portion of your container is not visible, it doesn't factor into the math of how much space gets consumed. It consumes zero space, so it doesn't share or have to share any of its space. So that's how we get a bunch of screen real estate back. Interesting, right? I kind of like that. So now if we go back over here, so then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my component. So that was working perfectly, right? That does what we needed to do. I want this one to do the same thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rename this and call it icon logo. And I'm going to go to label two there. I'm going to say, hey, your visible property is now icon, oh, we got to spell it right, logo dot visible. Remember, anytime that I'm gonna use the same formula, I don't use it in two places, I just reference one from the other. So then now, if we go back and we hit play again, when we get small, both that extra text and that logo go away, giving us more room for our header like we needed, right? So a dynamic header, I like this, all right? So one more thing I wanna talk about, and so that's gonna hopefully kinda of get the idea of how you would do that at this point, but so the same type of thing ran in for me around the font. So this 30 font works really well on my big screen, big monitor, but on a smaller uh, device, I needed more room. So I ended up doing something like this. I said, if uh, icon logo dot visible. So if the logo is visible, then I know I'm on a big screen, then I want to use a 30 font. If the logo is not visible, then I want to use a smaller, like a 20, I want to use a 20 font. We'll use, we'll use like a 12 font, so it's super obvious to you guys on the video. There we go. So then now if we go back over here, now we're going to say, all right, that all looks normal. Three, everything looks normal. We get into the twos, and then now the text is smaller. But I needed that in the one wise building, right? It made it look better on my phone because my phone needed, you know, more real estate because in reality, right, my phone size was like way down here. And so I needed a smaller font to make it work. You might not. But what I really want you to take out of this is this lesson that, you know, do having if statements, conditional statements based off of the screen size, I think is going to be one of the key things. And so in order to do that, right, we had to have this custom input property called screen size input for the number. And then that is just getting pushed in over here from our header having a, oh, I keep clicking on the wrong thing over here, our header having a screen size input. Also notice I named it screen size input. In my first test, I named it screen size, and I was confused like where it came from. <laughs> so by making it input, I was like, oh, I did that. What do you guys think? Are you feeling, feeling good? Do you feel like you kind of got your head a little bit wrapped around this? You know, there's so much more to do with the components. You know, obviously on this one over here, I made it a lot prettier and fancier, but We've talked about all that before, so I didn't want to make this video any longer than it needed to do. Speaking of over here, so my goal is hopefully if you guys don't have a million questions and this video doesn't overwhelm you, then our next video, hopefully in a week or so, we're going to talk about this, right? Because this one is where I'm like, hey, my layouts are magic. And we actually built out all of this. And remember, these are not form controls. These are actually um, independent cards that I built so that we could use it with patch and stuff because I think that's a lot harder than using a form. And I think if I go all the way to the bottom, yep, then we even stack like this. We stacked, right? We, we're going to do some neat stuff here. So this is, uh, this is our end goal, but I got to make sure that you guys get there. I think building the header today hopefully helped with that. Um, if you have any questions, leave me comments below. Any ideas, other things you need me to explore? You're like, oh, Shane, I need to learn about this portion of that. You've probably thought of something I haven't thought of. It happens all the time. So Leave that down there below. I respond to all my comments. I'm currently completely caught up. Yeah! The joys of holiday break and December being a slower month, but whatever. Um, yeah. Also remember, if you want to download this app or any of the other apps that you've seen on my videos, you can go to training.powerapps911.com, sign up for the curated library, and uh, you can then download all these apps. Or if you just need us to build this for you, we can do that for you over at powerapps911.com. Just go out there, fill out the contact form, and Jennifer or someone of her ilk will reach out to you and say, sup, how can we work together? All right, with all that, I'm gonna say thanks and have a great day. 
Before you go, be sure to click on the subscribe button over here so that way you'll be notified when new videos come out. If you need any help or you want to work together, whether your problem is big or small, check us out at Power Apps 911. We do it all. I rhymed. Or if you're looking for more formal training offerings, we have those linked up here somewhere. So check them out. Thanks and have a great day.